What is our pee going to taste like later? A party! <laughs> well, taste I'm not going like... to taste it. It's usually... It <laughs> Did I say taste? <laughs> <laughs> Good mythical morning. Today we're gonna use our mouths and our brains to see if we can identify food combinations that science asserts should taste good together. Yeah, and I'm gonna use my mouth to say that a portion of today's episode was paid for by Constant Contact. Now, without further ado, let's eat some food pairings to see who's got the smarter tongue. It's time for This Tastes Like Science. Okay, so we've explored this topic of the flavor pairing theory before, but there were so many more possibilities that we weren't able to sample. We're gonna return to the lab today. Yeah, it's time for more research. Oh, it feels good to bring that back. Yeah, it's been a while. I, Do you feel like we're just getting smarter just when we do yeah, that? Yeah, Try yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're you should do it too. Boop, 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 yeah. You're catching some smart waves. According to fans of the flavor pairing theory, science can predict how well two things will taste when combined based on the number of aromatic chemical compounds two foods have in common. The more in common, the better the taste. But that means science is pushing some pretty bizarre and unexpected food combinations that theoretically should be flavor matches. But will we agree? Okay, so to test this, we're gonna taste three different combinations in every round, and one of them is the scientific pairing, and two of them are just things that the mythical kitcheneers came up with to fool us. Will we find the scientific one? Let's find out. In the end, whoever's tongue is more scientific will win the coveted first place tongue ribbon. Same one as last time. We're starting off with potato chips, and we've got three different options for pairing, including bananas, asparagus, and bitters. So which one does science say should go together? I guess you just put it on the chip, right? And give it a dink. Well, oh, there's gonna, gonna be a lot of dinking. We don't have to. <laughs> Is that the, an inaugural dip? Listen, you just get an inaugural one. We always do it every time. Salty, crunchy, banana y. I mean, there is such a it thing as. It goes together. There's a banana chip. Just a straight up fried banana. An asparagus piece. Mm. Now, this is raw asparagus. Is that part of this science? Talk to me. Huh. And bitters? You just said, huh. You didn't have anything else to say, huh? Because I, I didn't think that I would like asparagus, but raw is, is raw asparagus just not bad? Because it was good with the chips. Oh, bitter. Whoa. That's, I mean, maybe That's I should have gone a little bit. Uh, less bitter? Less bitter. <laughs> yeah, that was. I feel like I've got to, I've got to guess just based on initial reaction of what happened here. Okay, so I'm going to do a three, two, one. You guys are going to put your bowl of potato chips behind the thing that you think is scientifically correct. Here we go. Okay. Three, two, one. Uh... Okay, yeah. Okay, you, I said you know behind, what? but that works too. I understand. I almost I thought both of those were good. Yeah. Asparagus and chips is actually it, it, it did, surprising. It, that's why I said but, hmm, this but is I a, didn't want to say anything. Yeah, I could tell, but this is a product. The correct answer is asparagus. Yeah, I don't I don't understand uh, why. And uh, so Link, that means you have to read the science, the big words. Okay. But I have a special little surprise for you guys. So this time that we're playing this game, Josh has actually created what we're calling party bites, which are combining the two things I in like a party cool, bites. delicious way. So you both get to partake in the party bites. So Josh, yes. if you want to pass that through. Potato and then, uh, chips. Yeah, Link, give us a little science. And asparagus oh. match because they share two six dimethyl lip pyrazine and two acetylpyrrole. Yeah, and, and I can taste both of those. In case you were wondering, you can also find two acetylpyrrole in roasted peanuts and popcorn. Yeah. So this is, what is this, a, a, ch a chip? It's a, a chip, chip coated asparagus. Chip coated asparagus. Is it fried? Yeah, it sure is. The fact that you said popcorn, I had no idea that asparagus would have this mm. almost savory impact on top of the chip. I, I mean, it's something happened in my mouth. That's why I just said, mm. That's pretty crazy. And wh what is our pee gonna taste like later? A party! <laughs> well, Tastes I'm not going like... to taste it. It's usually what it <laughs> Did I like. say taste? <laughs> <laughs> What's our pee gonna taste like uh, uh, <laughs> later when we exchange it and drink it like we always do? I'm, Find uh, out and more. <laughs> well, that's what I meant to say. 
before we subject our flavor flickers to more mad science, this portion of today's episode is an ad by Constant Contact. Constant Contact is an online marketing company that provides small businesses around the world with the online marketing tools, resources, and personalized coaching they need to market and grow their businesses. That's right, Constant Contact is your trusted partner to help with email and social marketing, website building, and e-commerce growth with the people and know-how to deliver results for your business. They have powerful, easy-to-use tools to help anyone look professional and accelerate their business and the people and marketing expertise to provide unmatched guidance, support, and education to help any business, regardless of experience, to achieve its goals. Maybe now we can finally start up our dream business at Crispy Town. You remember Crispy Town, Oh right? yeah, everything's deep fried and every lemon wedge is personally kissed by the fry daddies. That's right. With Constant Contact, you don't need to be a designer or even be tech savvy to have a professional looking branded web Website. Their site builder creates a personalized and mobile responsive multi-page website for you in just minutes, complete with images and guidance on content. And they have all the tools to help you sell online, whether you're just getting started or already have an e-commerce website platform. Constant Contact will help you get more sales from new and existing customers, find new customers, and keep inventory moving and cash flowing with expert retail marketing advice. Try it free today at ConstantContact.com. Thanks again to Constant Contact for sponsoring this portion of today's episode. And now, let's get back to tasting the science. Okay, so we've got watermelon, and we're going to be pairing that with olives. You're excited about oh that. Oh, gosh. Sugar snap peas and white bread. I just need a way to think of an olive so that I can... Think of it as good. Like it. Maybe the watermelon will help. Not helping. Two conflicting juices... Conflicting juices are happening in my mouth. I don't know. I like both of those things, and they just tasted like mm. watermelon and olives in my mouth. It's the just... way that you use the toothpicks is so funny to me because, like, you you manhandle. I'm I'm specifically talking about Rhett. Yeah. He touches. He just touched and picked up the one the pea to put it on the watermelon on the thing. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's you got you, a problem you do with that? You. No, no, you do you. Huh. Hmm. And Sugar then, snap pea and a yeah. I put it. I do it like this, Stevie. Look, put it together. That's a strange looking sandwich, huh? So now you got juice and you got a a pillow to soak it up. But the taste is really what we're going for. Not the texture. Not the textures. So it's the aromatic nature of these two things. Mm -hmm. Maybe you would smell them. Okay. You think you got it? Yeah, I'm ready to vote. Oh. All right. Watermelon behind the thing uh, in three, two, one. I think it's the olives. I think so too, but it, even it, though I hate it, I you know that doesn't mean anything. So it almost tastes like an hors d'oeuvre I've had before. The other like two an didn't olive work. In, in, in watermelon thing. Guys, you were both correct. Yeah. Which means I have to read the science and you still get the party bite, which I don't understand how that's fair. Where's my party bite? Well, Watermelon and olives match because they share benzadelhyde. Benzadelhyde. And two phenolphenol. Yep. And apparently synthetic benzadelhyde is what gives imitation almond extract its flavor. So that's like a watermelon martini with some olives in it. Extra dirty for you. Extra dirty, the way I, <sighs> I like it. I know you like this, right? Uh-huh. Oh, we got some blue cheese up in here. <sighs> I love some blue cheese. I know you do. Ooh, buddy. You, you love it enough for both of us. And that's the real reason why I hate it. But you love peanut butter. Blue cheese and so strong. peanut butter are both incredibly strong flavors. I'm kind of excited about putting this in my mouth. I'm trying not to contaminate. Contaminate? My, my peanut butter. Whoa. Stuff. They combined into something new. Yeah, it's like a, somebody put their foot in your peanut butter jar. Uh, was this vinegar in the middle? Uh, vanilla extract. Vanilla extract. Vanilla extract. And um, it makes the blue cheese taste like Play-Doh. It really does. <laughs> I, I need some salt to really go all the way. Okay, so now we got some pineapples. I don't know what to think about that. It, it creates a cohesive experience, which then tempts the vote. <laughs> Did you like that one, Stevie? <laughs> yeah. What are you laughing at? You are, okay, so you take the pineapple with your with the toothpick and you put a little bit of cheese on it. Rhett. <laughs> what is he doing over there? I'm doing that. Okay, you guys got I've guess? got it narrowed down to two. I think I'm ready. <clears throat> Three, two, 
one. The pineapple yeah. tastes incredible with the cheese. That, that, that was, that incredible. was good. Incredible. I can imagine a dish coming together with those. Two. Cheese and pineapple. Man, you guys are doing so well this yeah. time around. Last time, I think it's because I know that I, I, we're putting our, we're in the right mind state, knowing that Josh put the stuff together. Let's see it, man. Yeah, there's the party bite. I will read the science, hey, but Josh read. did deliver me a party bite, so thank you, Josh. No problem, <laughs> Lord, look at that. It's a blue cheese pineapple burger slice. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a little caramelized pineapple and onion, <laughs> a little bit of sweet soy, and then a blue cheese spread. Blue cheese and pineapple match Gosh. because they share tyric acid and methyl pentyl ketone. And just so you know, butyric acid is also found in human vomit and uh, the human colon. That's oh. why I like it so much. Um, Josh, this burger is next level. That's on the menu. Gosh. You, you excited again? Oyster's so, your favorite. Oh man, look at that. It's just like, it's like a s dirty yeah. snot on a, on a crustacean. But maybe science is gonna give me some new hope. So we've got green gelatin dessert. We've got beets and we've got uh, pepperoni. And for those of you confused at home, uh, we've got escalating points every round. That's what's happening with the math, just in case that was throwing you off. Of course, so we've agreed any, on, on all of the escalated points. So. Any, any man's game. I don't have a toothpick for my oyster, so I don't know what to do. This is, this is, uh. I honestly was thinking the exact same thing. This is, this is nasty, man, because, I mean, you got that gross thing with this gross thing on it. Two slurpy things together. How you doing? Okay, one down, two to go. Did you bite the oyster? Well, I only have two. No, we got so two. Yeah. Josh told me to bite it in half. Oh, which made I'm it so even sorry. more visceral. Yeah. Yeah, I did it that as well. But you know what? I'm gonna. I like beets. You know, if there's one thing I like, it's beets. I, I'm a fan of beets. This is hard. It's hard because you want to get half of the oyster, and then you want to get somebody put snot on my beets. Huh. That did something very interesting to Link, <laughs> apparently. Boy, is it that hard? <sighs> boy, boy. I got it down, boy. <laughs> I got it down, boy. Is it hard, boy? It's hard for me to get it down, boy. I mean, wh what, what? Is this a muscle inside of an oyster? No, it's the whole thing. No, I mean, what is it? It's just like a... It's just like heart and soul, man. Heart and soul? Yeah. There's no muscles? It's everything. It's all things. What does it do? People. What does it do? Like, does it reach out and bring the bring the trap shut? I don't understand. I've never hung out with one. At least pepperonis are strong. <sighs> mm. All right, guys. You ready to guess? As much as I've enjoyed this. This is really not easy because oysters are just so. It's not easy at all. Delicious. Three, two, one. It's either the pepperoni or it's either the pepperoni or the beets, but I'm going with beets because I felt like something new was sort of created there. I don't know. I think you need the something. The correct strong. answer is beets, yeah. which means Link, you have to read the science. And there's a party bite, which Link, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy. What is this, homie? Boy? Uh, so these are raw oysters in the half shell with the green apple horseradish beet relish. Oh boy. <laughs> oysters and beets match because they share Capronaldehyde and dimethyl sulfoxide. But don't eat your oysters and beets in the sauna because high vapor concentrations of dimethyl sulfoxide may lead to headaches, dizziness, and even sedation. Oh gosh, I don't want to be sedationed. And that mm. means that, Rhett, you win the tongue ribbon this time. Mm. Oh gosh, I gotta put this thing on. And you know what? I'd love for you to have that if you want it. <laughs> I have, I have, I have. Well, We want to thank, uh, Everybody who made this possible, uh -huh. at least the fish not being Josh over there, and science. Uh huh. Mr. Science. Thanks for uh, subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. I am Becky from Bakersfield, California, about to have a bonfire on the beach, and you can spin the wheel of mythicality. We will spin well, we'll that wheel it. of mythicality. Click the top link to watch us guess which condiments were swirled together in Good Mythical More. And to find out where the Will of Mythicality is going to land. 
prop up our mythical content with a mythical or GMM pop socket. Available now at mythical.com.